also watched the Lex Friedman and Tim Dillon interview. I thought that was pretty decent. Um, I think I watched both. Actually, I did watch both. I think the one that Lex did with Tim and the one Tim did with Lex, that was really interesting. Um, I found the Lex Friedman interview or interviews overall a little bit tiresome. I had to kind of give them a break, more so because of Lex. That whole like um, lead with love, I block you with love, I come with love, love will, rule, love will save the world sort of stuff is annoying. Uh, maybe I'm being um, too cynical about it, but I just think it's, um, it's I think um, Tim didn't touch on it as well when he said something along the lines of, oh, you think everybody, I think kind of the Gary Vee thing, right, where they think everyone has a business in them, everyone's an entrepreneur, everyone can be creative, everyone can be an artist. It's like, no, some people just want to live a somewhat normal life, be able to put food on the table, you know, clothes on their back, a roof over their head and do the normal things like watch a couple of reality tv shows and maybe go on a holiday a year they don't want more than that they're just more than happy with that they contend with maybe just raising a family um you know whatever and this idea that everyone's an entrepreneur is just brain dead and also is proof that you probably only hang around with a certain group of people who kind of would lead you to believe that because you know you only have to hang around with a couple of fashion people um during fashion week to come away from it thinking fashion is going to save the world it, it can happen to all of us, right? So especially when you start talking to people who are real movers and shakers in their industry, people who have great insights, experience, they can legitimately make you believe that, you know, an overlook or an under or a seam or a, a pattern cutting exercise is somehow going to cure all of our ills in the world, which it obviously isn't because life is way more complicated than that. And most people don't give a crap about those little niches and whatnot. Um, and then they touched upon, you know, obviously Lex's infatuation with Putin, which I never really understood. I don't really get that whole thing, especially for someone like him who lives in America and gets to see um, the Russian propaganda through the eyes of Western world or whatever it may be. It's just an odd thing. And especially for me, too, having read or being in the process of reading this book called um, Putin's People by Catherine Belton. Right. This one here. And um, obviously, um Concerning all the stuff that's happening in Kazakhstan, I think, you know, Russian troops were uh, brought in to quell some of the uprising. This is off the back of 26 or so people dying, um, you know, started off as a peaceful protest against fuel hike prices. And then suddenly it descended into everybody just losing their shit and essentially using this opportunity to, you know, voice their frustration with the government, which led, I think, to the prime minister resigning, which then led to the president coming out saying that the you know, the armed forces should go out and shoot protesters without warning, like absolute Looney Tune stuff, right? And then they bring in the Russian troops by plane, <laughs> Putin that comes out to help out to quell the uprising because of course, you know, he can't have any, he's not really a fan of people uprising and being awoken and realizing how, what kind of conditions they're living in, you know? The man who allegedly has um, offed many, many political rivals and opponents I think there's currently one now still in prison, right? I forgot his name, the one that was, um, the one that ran away to Berlin and shit and they, they finally got him or he, no, he actually came back to face the music. He's currently in prison now at the moment. And then he got Lex Friedman saying that somehow he's going to interview Putin and what, he's going to ask him some really insightful questions that are going to make him maybe believe that democracy is actually a good thing and he shouldn't have an ironclad on the, you know, um, he shouldn't have the ironclad on the leadership of Russia forever and ever and ever. Like, I don't know. I don't get it. I really don't. It's really, really bizarre. Um, so I, I've definitely stopped listening to that podcast often. Lex Friedman show uh, podcast. Sorry. I still think it's in terms of value per podcast or value per, but whatever that metric is that you can use in terms of every episode is chock full of value. And he legitimately, I think Tim Dillon made a point too. He legitimately has some of the best guests in terms of podcasts out there that I can definitely say, definitely. Obviously, it lends, it leans more to the side of stuff that he's interested in when it comes to AI, robotics and whatnot, engineering. But overall, in terms of the, the, the brevity of guests and how deep they go in conversations and whatnot, it's, it's, it's amazing. And then he has timestamps in the main podcast and he has really detailed clips or little clips, sorry, like many, many little clips on different topics that get uploaded straight away. So like really well run show. I have to give the guy props and he'll see he researched his guests really well. He's always got really insightful questions. I think the Elon Musk interview was superb. One of the better ones we've had, we've, we've seen of him recently, which obviously helps because I think they're quite friendly. Lex and Elon but god damn it man everything else like the Putin stuff is just so weird especially when you have to honestly after reading books like this 
which again it's a bit skewed because it's a you know a westerner kind of talking about russian politics and maybe there's more to the story that we don't know i'm op open to that i'm open to the idea that maybe the way that we've kind of been told to view putin is maybe similar to how we were told to view people like gaddafi and whatnot granted but for the most part we can agree that you know putin isn't a fan of his political rivals or people who speak up you know or who have some not so you know flattering words to say about him as a person or his family or whatnot and usually they either get ran out of town they get disappeared or they get washed up somewhere you know on the shore somewhere which i mean found with you know non-suspicious non reasons of passing away like we know the guy's a bit of a fuck in that regard a bit of a gangster in that regard so for lex to kind of be like i lead with love i lead with love and not see quite plainly that this guy doesn't believe in love <laughs> the only love he believes in is control right and power and and um um authority right like that's the only thing he believes in the only yeah you know i mean the only love that he believes in is, is the love of locking shit down um but you know whatever um but definitely recommend you check it out um tim dylan interviews lex friedman it's really fun i think it's the best better one you're going to get out of kind of someone interviewing lex because he gets to be a bit funny and let his hair down a bit and not be so uptight and have that weird monotone boring tone that kind of send, sends you to sleep sometime i think he was really fun on that one so definitely check that out if you haven't already that's a recommendation i'd give to you